All right, so you went out and collected data on the leaf lengths and leaf, leaf widths. You've imported your data here. Next up is to analyze the data. So we've got a specific goal in mind. We want to know, are the lengths of these leaves different between the two plant species? We've got one, magnolia versus oak, right, that definitely should see a difference. We have other ones that are kind of close, all right? And what we have to do is when we analyze it, we have to account for some of that variation in your, your normal, uh, the variation in the leaf lengths. All right, so what we're gonna do here to address that, that question is to create a figure first so that we can visualize the averages. And then we're going to perform a t-test uh, and do everything in Excel. Why? Because you're going to be making plenty of figures. You're going to run several of these tests in Excel. This is a great introduction for it. So here's my data set. All right. Uh, in order to make our figure, we're going to need two different things. We're going to need the averages, and we're going to need the standard errors. All right. Sometimes we could do a standard deviation for the error bars. I actually recommend the standard errors. I said you can use standard deviation for error bars. I prefer standard errors because standard errors uh, account for sample sizes. All right, they kind of standardize against a sample size. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to do everything where I can see it. So first up is down at the bottom. I am going to make just some labels. So the first thing we're going to have our mean, which is the average. All right, we're going to have our mean, which is the average. And then next thing we're going to do is we'll need our standard deviation. I'm just going to use SD for standard deviation. And we're going to use that to calculate our SE, which is our standard error. Did the mean put, yeah, it did. All right. So first up is our, is our mean. Our average is defined as the sum of our values divided by our sample size. The equation's in the lab. All right, we could do this by hand. I could show you how to do it in the calculator if you want. We're going to use Excel. So what's the function that does this for us in Excel? Yeah, average. Average. All right, average will do that. How do we access that function? Equal sign. So anytime we're going to tell Excel we want to run a function, we hit equal sign, and then we start typing in our function. And Excel has the autocomplete that allows us, once, once it's highlighted, once the average is highlighted and we have the correct one, to hit the tab, and that will autocomplete that line. So now you can see it adds the average, and then it has the first parentheses on it. Now it's as, asking us the average of what? What do we need to calculate? All right, so now what we have to do is tell Excel that we want to calculate the average of that entire column. So I will left click and hold at the very top, and then I will drag down all the way down here. And what you'll notice is as I move it, we are now putting in a cell reference for the average. All right, and when I have the entire column highlighted, I'm going to let it go. All right, the cell reference refers to the column letter and the row numbers. So for our average, it says B3 colon B22. And that tells our, or Excel, since we have the colon, we want to calculate the average of the values B3 all the way to B22, whatever those numbers are. And then we can close it, close parentheses, and hit enter and it calculates the average for us, which is great, which is great. Here's the other nice thing about Excel. So go ahead and get the average of your first column. All right, make sure you have it. All right. Here's the other thing. We need the average of these, the rest of these columns, right? So we can do it the long way, which is to type in average every single time and highlight every single column, or we can make use of the fill function. So note right down here, right down in that lower corner, let's zoom in a little bit, 
there is a square that is a little bit bigger. All right, that's going to be our handle. So when I move the cursor over, notice how it changes. Once it changes, I'm going to left click and hold, and then I'm going to drag to the right. And when I get all the way to that last column, I'm going to let it go. And what that does is it, it's, it fills each of those blank cells with whatever I have in that first column, which is the average function. But the nice thing is, is when we referenced these cells, we didn't put in a hard reference. We put in, you can call it a soft reference, which means when we fill it across, each of these references gets updated. So instead of saying we want the average of column B, here you can see we want, we're getting the average of column C. Here we get the average of column D. Here we get the average of column E. Super useful. Super useful. All right, so we have our average. Next up is our standard deviation. Is there a function for the standard deviation? Yep. So what is it? And Yep, so when I do STA, I get standardized and forecast something. That's not right. But if I do ST, back it up, you'll see that we have a couple different things. We have STDEV for standard deviation. This is standard deviation period P, standard deviation period S. And then you also have standard deviation A, standard deviation A, uh, and you've got standard D, standard deviation P. The one that we want is this standard deviation.s, which is the default STDEV. So you can either use, I'm used to STDEV, that's what I'm used to, but if you, you prefer to use the dot S, that also works. The difference between the S and the P is are, are we calculating the standard deviation of a sample or a population? And the difference is with the standard deviation, you're going to divide by the sample size minus one for a sample, but for a population, it's a sample size minus, or it's just divided by the sample size. So we have the equations. You can look at the equations. I talk about it a bit in, in our biostats course. Uh, you don't really need to know the specifics, but you do need to pick the correct one, which is this STDEVS, the sample. So I'm going to do the same thing. I have the function that I want. I'm going to select the very first value, and I'm going to drag it down to the last value, and I don't even have to close the parentheses for Excel. I can just hit enter and it, uh, it closes them for me. So I have standard deviation, which is great. Now I'm going to fill it. So wait for my cursor to change over here. Left click and hold, drag it, drag it across. I've got my standard deviations. Now, some people would, would use these values, the means and the standard deviations in their figures. I prefer standard errors. Standard error is the standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size. All right, so what I'm going to do is write a formula for that. All right, so my formula, I'm going to hit equals. We're not using a built-in function because Excel doesn't have this built-in function. So instead, what I'm going to do is hit equals, and then I'm going to take my standard deviation that I calculated and I'm gonna click on that cell. So I want that value, whatever value is in cell B24. And then I'm gonna divide it by the square root of our sample size. All right, now there's a couple different ways to get our sample size. We know our sample size, right? What is it? 20. All right, so I'm gonna do SQRT, which is our square root, hit parentheses, and then do 20 and make it easy on us. We know it's, we have 20, that's our sample size for all of them. All right, I wrote my function, I wrote my formula, I'm gonna hit enter, and I get my standard error. So our standard error is basically standard deviation standardized to the sample size. Square root of our sample size, be a little bit more, more precise. 
So I have that, and then I am going to drag and fill that equation over here. So now I have, I have the values that I need. Next up is our figure. All right. Our figure needs the average, and it needs a standard error. I prefer to get it set up in a new table. So the general format for this, and I'll do it down here, is I will say uh, tree A, let's assume I'm working tree A, all right, and you have tree B, that's yours, all right, and then I'm going to do, uh, this is, we're doing length. All right, so I'm getting a table set up that will hold the average length of tree A, the average length of tree B, the standard error for tree A, and the standard error for tree B. All right. So I am going to get this table set up. Now, I can type in the numbers. All right, I can do 16.95, and then I could do 12.6. That's perfectly fine. If that's how you want to do it, that's how you can do it. Or we can do references. So I can hit equals. That's my first average. Equals. That's my second average. Equals. This is my first standard error. Equals. Here's my second standard error. All right, either way is going to work. But we do need a table that looks something like this. We've got our labels. This would be our x-axis labels right here. This is going to be the information for our bar graph. All right, so did you get to this spot? All right, so now I'm going to highlight just those two columns. Don't highlight the SE. Just highlight those two columns, our labels and our lengths. That's it. And then I'm going to insert a figure. And the figure that we're going to insert, man, I could barely read this. That looks like it. Column or bar graph? That could be good. Yep, we're going to pick this. It's not what I recommend in, bio, in the biostats class. Where it, I wouldn't ever recommend one of these graphs uh, for averages and, and so forth. Uh, but we're going to do it for this class. We're going to make it easy. All right. So we're going to do this. We're going to use this first one. And I'm going to click it so that we, we make it. And I'm just going to move this a little bit so we can see it and I guess we'll tell you what, we're going to move this down a little bit so everyone can see it. All right, we're not done yet. All right, so this is our average. We, you can see we've got 16, almost 17 for tree A. We have an average of 12.6 for tree B. That's looking okay, but we're missing some stuff. We're missing our error bars, for example. We're missing our labels. So, you know, what's the x-axis? Well, it's the tree, you know, the tree species. All right, we're missing our y-axis. You know, what's the, what is that? What is 12? What is 14? We don't know that. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we, how we add some of this stuff. So first up is I'm going to do the error bars. All right, now there's a couple ways to access this. Since I have my figure highlighted or clicked, I get the chart tools. Right up here, you can see we have our chart tools. And we've got a couple different things that we can look at. We have the design, or we have the format. All right. So the format kind of tells you about some of the colors. Uh, it tells you some of the alignments, how big uh, you want the bars, how much of a gap you want, all, all of this stuff. Uh, I tend to stick to just this design. And actually, I, I usually just handle the right clicks uh, to get to where I need to, need to go. So what we're going to do is, and also these were added in a, in a new one, we can add a chart element. We can edit 
change our chart styles. We can filter charts. All right, so what we want to do is add a chart element. So when I click this chart element, what we want to add are the error bars. All right. And I, I'm going to add the error bars, but we're not doing a standard error or percentage. We're doing our more options. So let me get back over here because the video doesn't see it back here. All right, so we're going to do our, oops, on that, we want our more options. So you can say, well, hold on. Didn't we have standard error? We manually calculated it. If we let Excel calculate, calculate it, it's not going to come out properly. All right. So since we already calculated the mean and standard errors, we're going to specify what our error bars should actually be. So what we want is we have our vertical error bars. All right. So vertical error bars, we want both whiskers here, top and bottom, all right? And then what we're gonna do is we're not using a fixed value, we're gonna use a custom value. So I'm gonna click custom, and once we have a custom value, we have specify value. And once I do that, we're gonna get a new window that pops up. But before you do that, make sure that you can see this column that we have. So I'm gonna specify my value, this box pops up. I will highlight that and delete it. I'm going to highlight that and delete it. So our positive value, what we want is I'm going to click this box. This, this will allow us to select the column. I'm going to click that, and I'm going to highlight my SE column. And then I'm going to close it using this, the box to that right. I'm going to do the same thing for the negative error bar and close it up. So now I've got the positive error value, the negative error value, all right? They're the values that we're gonna use in the table and Excel will match them up to the appropriate plant. So you can see they're about the same for, for me. But if you had different standard error values, your error bars shouldn't look identical. Whichever one's larger should be a larger set of error bars. All right, so we have that. That looks good. You can see the error bars there. I'm going to hit OK, and we've got our first, we have our error bars. Great. All right, and we, we can close it. Next up, we need to add some, some labels. Did you get it? No, yeah, our bars are so small. It's so, super, not much variation, right? Yeah. Yep. That's possible. I try, I try to, these are random data. All right, so now we're going to do access titles. All right. So I'm going to check the checkbox for the access title. Uh, and then it's actually pretty easy because I'm going to click down here. Uh, I'm going to say label as tree species. All right. And then for the, for this one, I'm going to take this out and say this is uh, length. And I'm going to specify that it's in millimeters. Length in millimeters. And then probably the last thing, I actually don't like having a title. Because you're usually going to write a, a figure caption for most of this stuff. All right. If you're making multiple figures, yeah, you probably need to have something that says, this is the figure for you know for plant A. This is a figure for plant B. But for here, we have one figure. That's it. That's all we needed. All right. So one last thing. Grid lines, cost extra. Choose choose up ink. I typically remove those. Let's see if they're there. Yep. So I'm just gonna click on that plus, uncheck the grid lines, and it looks pretty good. Now, do we need any legends? Nope, we don't. We didn't have two different groups. You know, we didn't do tree A, tree B, like a spring and a fall measure. All right, so we don't have like a different color bars. Uh, you can change the colors. You know, if you don't like blue, you can change it to clear if you wanted, or, or white. Uh, probably wouldn't want to use black because it'll cover up the air bars. 
but here's how you do it. Any questions? All right, so we have our figure. Here, I can look at it, and I am going to expect a difference. And the reason is I'm going to use these error bars. One of the shorthand ways is to take our error bars, our standard error, and multiply by 2, and then look for an overlap. All right? If the standard error, 2 times the standard error, overlaps the mean of the other group, then there's no difference. There's no difference because these error bars are representing, uh, they're representing our uh, variation in data. All right. So if the standard errors capture the mean of the other group, then it could just be random chance that, that we saw what we saw. If we repeated the experiment, maybe our mean will be higher. Maybe the other group's mean will be lower. All right. If we compare, and the standard errors do not overlap at all, two times the standard errors do not overlap, then there's a difference. We're going to expect a p-value that's less than 0.05. We'd say, yeah, these lengths are different. If the error bars overlap, but they don't capture the mean of the other group, that's where we need our stats. So I keep saying two times, and we only did one you know, single standard error. Could we change this to two times the standard errors on this graph? Yep, pretty easy. I already have it. We use, I use cell references, so I can just do two times that. Now, this is for tree A. Watch my error bars. They will automatically get bigger. I'm going to do the same thing for, for this one. Click it up here. Two times. Automatically multiply it. So I just need to know, I just need to be a little bit more specific in my caption that the, the error bars, they don't represent a standard error, they represent two times a standard error. So here, I have no overlap. Right now, it's telling me I don't think there's a difference. You, on the other hand, may have some overlap with the error bars, but they don't capture the mean. Now we have to run a test. So what we're going to do is run a t-test. Here's where things could get a little more difficult. I have an Excel, or Excel has an add-in that allows us to utilize option boxes to run a statistical test. All right. Under the data tab, there should be a box that says data analysis or analysis tool pack. Mine's not available. So what we have to do is add it into our Excel. And I am going to move over to insert. Now, I, I'm following a very small screen up here. So I'm going to go to insert. And do you see the my add-ins right here? Yep. So if I click on that, whoops, hold on, not that that if I click on that drop down here, what we want is manage other add-ins. All right, I'm gonna click on that and that will open up this window. And you can leave, leave it open. I'm gonna show you another one, another way. If your Excel doesn't have this option, because I think this was a newer type, uh, a new version of Excel, what you would have to do is go to file and then options, file options, and down on our le left we have add-ins right here. And we're at the same screen. All right, so two different ways to get there. This is what we need, the analysis tool pack. And in, on mine, it's inactive. It hasn't been added to Excel or it hasn't been activated. So the question is, how do we activate it? Down here, I have Manage Excel Add-ins. I'm going to hit Go, and that opens up a new window where I can checkbox the Analysis Tool Pack. So go ahead and checkbox it, because I'm sure yours, yours may or may not have it. And once you checkbox it, hit the OK. 
And now, when I go to the data tab, I've got data analysis right there. So the lab tells you we're going to run a t-test. Why t-test? Because we have two groups. And we are comparing the mean between those groups. So I will click the data analysis, and up pops a window. In this window, there are numerous tests that we can run. The one that we want is this, a t-test to sample, a two sample test. It's not paired. A paired test is something like when you measure heart rate before and after exercise. For a paired test, we're measuring the same individual twice. We're not doing that. We've got individual leaves. So we're not going to do a paired t-test. Uh, for us, what we're going to use is, what did the lab say? Uh, I guess I didn't tell you. So we're going to do the assuming equal variance. I'd actually prefer the unequal variance, but we're going to use, we're going to do a t-test, two sample, assuming equal variance. We're going to assume all of our assumptions of this test are met. When you get to biostats, we don't make that assumption. So I'm going to make sure that's highlighted, click OK, and then it opens up this window. Now you can see we've got boxes, much like the boxes that we had for the error bars. All right, we have variable one range, variable two range, and this is under the input. This is where we will highlight our columns for plant A and our column for plant B. So input one range, I'm going to, it's, my cursor is there. You can click on it to open up the tab, or you can just highlight our cells. All right, so that automatically filled it in and said, okay, so for plant A, these are all of the, these are the 20 measurements. For plant B, these are the 20 measurements. And you can go top, you can go to bottom, they, they're just highlighted, all right? And then everything else is looking okay. Because we didn't highlight any labels, we didn't highlight any header rows, so we don't have that checkbox marked. We don't fill in hypothesized mean. We assume that the means are equal. That's what we're working on. We're going to leave alpha at 0.05, but what I will do is change our output range. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on this to get it smaller, and then I'm going to say, I want my t-test output right here. Doesn't matter. I'm just picking an open spot. Uh, and you pick a spot because all of the output will appear right here, so to the right and below. So I have that. Once you get it, I'm going to hit OK. And this gives a bunch of information including some information that we already knew. So it gives us the means of variable one and variable two. So variable one, that was input one, that was plant A for me. All right, variable two is plant two. These numbers should match what we calculated. The variance. The variance is the standard deviation square. So if we took these values and took the square root, we'll get our standard deviation that we calculated. The observations, there's our sample size, all right? The pooled variance is needed to calculate this value, which is the T statistic. So what this test is doing is saying, okay, we've got these data, we have the means, we have the variances. Let's come up with this value, this T statistic. If we assume that the means are actually equal, the T statistic comes from a probability distribution called the student's T distribution. All right. And what we're going to use with that is to see, based on this value, how, li how likely is it that we'll get a value this large or larger if there really is no difference. All right. And it uses this, this value to come up with these. 
these two spots. The two spots that we're talking about, the probability that our t is less than or equal to the observed t, or I should say, probability that we would get a value less than or equal to that t, or the probability that, that we would get a value less than or equal to, to, to the t for a two-tailed. All right, so one tail versus two tailed is all about which direction. For the vast majority of our stuff, and probably for all of the stuff, we're going to use this two tailed section here because we have no expectation that one leaf is going to be larger or the other. When you went outside, you had no ex expectation. Now, you guys have magnolia. All right, you can look at it and say, yeah, I have an expectation that magnolia is going to be larger. But when you started this, before you went outside, you didn't know that you were going to pick magnolia. You picked that tree. What if you went out and picked up one of those big palm trees as your second? Who knows? So our two-tail test is going to allow either of our values to be larger than the other. All right. So we're going to look at this. Mine is really small, 2.83e to the negative 7. What that value is is 2.83 times 10 to the negative 7. It is a very, very small p-value, which means in probability term, that we have a very, very, very small chance of actually getting this value, or you can say a difference between these two values just by random chance alone. And if it's not random chance, what is causing it? Well, probably the fact that we measured two different tree species, right? They're gonna, you guys got a difference, right? What's your p-value? Is 1.24 to the 24th. E to the negative. negative 24. Even larger. Even larger. Right? They have even less chance that, that you would pick a magnolia tree and a live oak tree in another experiment, right? And you would get an even bigger difference. Just by random chance. Right? So what, what causes that? Well, we have two different tree species. They had two different evolutionary pathways, evolutionary histories. All right, now what do we need to know? I have everything that you're going to need to know here in the gray box on our lab handout. All right, you don't need to know what exactly the, the t-test is doing. All right, you don't really even know what the p-value is, but you do need to interpret it. So on our test, we always assume the null hypothesis is that there's no difference. That's always our assumption, that there's no difference. That's our null. Our alternate is that there will be a difference. We just don't know which direction. And then you'll have to know how to use these p-values. So if our p-values are less than 0.05, that's less than 5% chance, or 5% chance or less that we would actually get these, this difference just from random chance. All right, And we're going to say that 5% or less is too unlikely to be due by chance alone. So at that point, what we do is reject our null hypothesis and conclude that the means actually differ. If our p-value is above 0.05, so 0 0.0501, that's slightly above 0 0.05, now we're allowing it to say, yeah, if we repeated it, there's an entirely possible chance that we can get this difference again or an even smaller difference. So at that point, we fail to reject our null hypothesis and we conclude that the means are, are similar, all right? So we have two groups, my random data, and we have this groups where the p-value is super small. Who had a rather large p-value? Or at least greater than 0.05? Did anybody? No? All right, so I mean, kind of, Makes sense, right? Kind of makes sense. All right. So, any questions on making the figures or doing doing the t test? Yeah, I have a couple questions, but I'll take it through lunch time. All right. We'll 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 work with it after. All right. All right. So, what I'll do is post this video later on in the week, so you have reference to it. If you're sitting down to do the widths and you're unsure how to do it. Uh, so that you can always go back to this.